Hello and welcome to Calculus Tutorial. We are still on our walk through volume and now we are moving from the disk method to the washer method. So these become a little bit more difficult and the, uh, the shape we're finding becomes a little bit different. Thankfully one of the main themes that's been running through this, big minus small, continues to be very important. So well, let's take a look at what the washer method looks like. So the first difference you'll see is that our region is now being defined between two curves. And to start off, we're still going to rotate this region around the x-axis. So you'll see it come around there and then full circle. And so we still get a vase, but this time the inside is hollow. And so we end up with a hollow vase. And so we only want the volume of what is actually solid, not the volume of the middle. And so what we're going to end up doing is just subtracting out the inside volume to give us just the shell of the vase. So let's take a look at how we're going to do all of this. So first, we're going to take the volume of the big, okay? And so when we do that cross-section, we get that as our radius from there to there, which is just the height of f of x. So the big will be the integral of pi of the big one, f of x, squared dx. But that would give us the entire thing filled in. Now we want to subtract off the inside. Well that would be another solid with this as the radius, which is simply the y value of the other function. So we're going to subtract off the integral of pi times the small one. squared. And this is the, man, I cannot spell small for some reason. That is the smaller one. So we're finding the volume of the large vase and then subtracting off the inside part to make it hollow. And the reason why this is sometimes called the washer method is because you can see the cross section looks like a washer. Personally, I prefer the donut method. So let's see how that works algebraically. Where are we here? That one. So we are going to first start by simply revolving around the x-axis, and then we'll move to revolve around a different horizontal axis. So revolve the region bound by the curve, x cubed plus 3x squared, which is the cubic, and the line x plus 3 from negative 3 to negative 1. So it looks like our region from negative 3 to negative 1 will just be this bit right here is the one that we want to take a look at. So there is our region. I can't get it all filled in. All right. And we're rotating that around the x-axis. So if you want to try to draw um, the other side of it, this is where it really gets kind of hard. See if you can't draw a mirror down here. That's what it will look like. This whole piece in here will be hollow. That's what we're going to have to subtract out. So the big thing here is what you want to do is think about the big radius, which will go from the center to the big function, and then the small radius, which will go from the center to the small function. So there you see my half a donut or my half of a washer. If you want to see an actual three-dimensional picture of this, there it is. I thought I got pretty close with that uh, cross-sectional drawing, but you can see the cone 
on the inside is hollowed out. Sorry, I can't move that one. But you can see the region here is the same as the region we are looking at. All right. Well, let's get this math done. So let's take the integral for the big one. We're going to be going from negative 3 horizontally to negative 1. And what is the radius of the big one? Well, it goes from here all the way up to the top of the function, which is f of x squared. And I'll squeeze the pi in there. Minus, now we have to subtract out the inside, which will again be from negative 3 to negative 1. So what is the radius of the small one? That would be the other equation, y equals x plus 3. Um, I don't have a name for that one, so I'll just put x plus 3 squared dx. Now, if you want to, you can simplify this into one integral if you want. They both have a pi, so that can be factored out negative 3 to negative 1 of this part minus this part. And you can put it all in one integral if you want, or you can do two individually. Um, I will let you plug that into your calculator if you wish, um, but that is what will give you the answer there. All right, so that's what happens if you're rotating around the x-axis. It's not too hard to figure out what the radius is. That's always our first question. What is the radius? That gets a little harder to answer when you revolve it around a different axis other than the x or the y. So that's one thing we definitely want to practice here. What happens when you revolve around something else? So here we have our region, and we are going to revolve it around the line y equals 1. So we're going to have a big radius, and we're going to have a small radius. We're going to take the integral of pi big R squared, and we're going to subtract the integral of pi little r squared big minus small. So what is the big radius? Well, it starts on the axis of rotation, and you draw your half circle up to the big one. All right, so what is this radius? Well, it's not the entire y value, because that comes all the way down to the x-axis. That's too much. I need to subtract off this bit. So it's going to be the y value minus 1. And our y value in this case, oh, it has a name. That's kind of nice. It will be g of x minus 1. All right, what is the small radius? Well, that goes from there to there. Maybe I'll draw both at the same time so you can see the washer. So there is our washer. The big radius was from 1 up to that function. The small radius is from 1 up to this function. So you subtract them big minus small. So that will be f of x minus 1. So we throw these into our integrals, pi times the big radius, which is g of x minus 1, squared minus the integral of pi times the little radius, which is f of x minus 1 squared dx. Uh, what are our um, limits here? 
So we're going this way. So we're starting here at zero and going all the way to, it looks like three. So from zero to three, from zero to three. So you could leave it that way, it's kind of long. Type that into the calculator. I would recommend typing in the function g of x into your calculator as like f1 or f2 and this one as probably f1 um, and then actually using the names that way you don't get messed up with parentheses um, or you could take this into one big integral factor out the pies and then do the first radius big minus small minus the second radius big minus small. Either of those are correct and will get you there. So there's a lot of big minus small I hope you've seen. Um, we take the big volume and subtract the little volume. And then for the radius, to find the actual distance for the radius, you also do big minus small. Um, and so this is a current a theme that keeps coming back and you want to make sure you understand it. All right, we are almost done with volume. There are a few more things for us to take a look at. Did I give us one more example to look at? I did, because you might revolve around a different axis that's above you. Yeah, that'll be a little bit different, won't it? All right, let's try that. So we have our axis of rotation. This is going to be the middle of our circles. We again are going to have a big radius and a small radius. So one of them will go from here to there. And the other one will go from here all the way down to there. So which one is bigger? It's the one touching the parabola. So that will be our big R. That's using f of x. So that will be our big radius. But how am I going to find the distance from here to here? Well, big is the 7. Small is the function. So that will be 7 minus f. What is the little radius from here down to there? That will be 7 minus the function is the small one, which is x minus 3, so I don't get a name this time. Now it's important to note that should be in parentheses, so that will become a negative 3. So 7 minus 3, might as well do that right now, will be 4 minus x when we simplify it. And then pi, I'm going to do the one big integral, pi r squared minus r squared is what we are doing. So that will be pi times the big radius squared minus the little radius squared. So 7 minus f of x and 4 minus x dx and then we have to go from where to where so again we're going from 3 or sorry from 0 all the way to it looks like those cross at 3 since it's the same region as last time there's a lot of big minus small coming in um, with that one. And so you got to keep it all straight. I think if you find your two radii first, that can sometimes help you. Then worry about plugging it into the volume formula is usually a good way to go. All right. Volume is getting close to being done. One more set of rotations to do.